Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be working on some lighting projects, so let's go ahead and do that. I guess these projects today are more of a tinkering around than anything else, but these two ballasts right here are quite unique. One's older than the other, this one's older than this one, but do you notice right off the bat anything interesting about them? Well, they're, they look the same as any ordinary fluorescent rapid start ballast, but if you see right here, dim. Dim. These are dimmable fluorescent ballasts. I got these quite a long time ago with a whole bunch of other lighting things and a whole bunch of other ballasts. Um, a lot of them weren't the correct voltage, so they went ahead and went to the recycling center. But these are 120 volt and they're dimmable, which is really cool. Now I've had these for, well like I said, quite a while, but I've never turned them on. I've never tried them out. Um, I don't know if they work, but they are brand new. This one, it still has the wires wrapped around it. On the bottom, I think we can find a date code right there of some sort. And this older one has a date code we can actually read, 88, so I'm guessing 1988. Um, they're both advanced ballasts, and you can see they changed the um, main sticker here over the years. I believe this one is brand new as well. The only problem is, is that it has a little bit of surface rust on it. Now that's not a big deal. I think it'll work just fine. Now, obviously we need to put this in something to test it out. So I have this fixture right here. I've used it in a couple of my videos. It is a... What is that? A Benjamin Division Thomas Industries fixture. I've had this for quite a while as well. I've used it to test some F40 T12 bulbs and videos. So I just threw a random bulb that I could grab quickly and put it in here. This is a PQL Premium Life. It's made by Sylvania, um, but obviously it has a different name on it. Uh, we have our cord here. It says use rapid start lamps only. Well, that'll still be true here when we're done. I put the switch on the end because this light was installed for a while as a temporary light. And um, the switch works really well. Now, these are dimming ballasts, so um, the dimmer will have to be outside here. But if a dimmer actually is small enough to fit inside the fixture, I might use one of these holes and put a rotary dimmer on it or something like that. It does require a specific type of dimmer, as you can see in the uh, instructions here. However, I've heard using a standard incandescent dimmer also works just fine. Now, another thing that is required here is a circuit interrupting lamp holder. I do not have any of those, but as long as you have a bulb in the fixture and it's not turned on, or I mean, as long as you have a bulb in the fixture when it's on, you're fine. Just don't turn on the fixture without a bulb in it. That's what I've learned. Uh, this one has the exact same uh, instructions on it there. As you can see, there's also an auxiliary wire there as well. Um, it says C auxiliary for additional connections. I'm guessing that doesn't really have to do anything. Uh, I don't think we'll need it. I'll just cap it off and we'll see what we can do because I've never really used one of these. Um, the camera keeps going out of focus, that's nice. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this fixture, and we'll go from there. So after opening the fixture up, you can see the ballast inside. It's a high power factor, advanced ballast, and it's the same size as the dimming ballast. You can see um, it's a slightly different uh, design case with uh, uh, slanted sides here versus the uh, rounded ones. Um, but this obviously does the energy saving lamps, and this can only do a 40 watt lamp, which is understandable. So, this ballast is original to this fixture, and um, I guess what we will go ahead and do is take these sockets out and um, install this ballast. So I have the ballast inside the fixture now, and it was quite easy to remove the other one. Uh, the way that I do it to get the wires out of existing sockets, obviously the sockets are the kind where you push the wire in and then it holds it in there. Now I always have a little piece of wire here, which I strip quite long, and uh, you kind of poke it in there and it'll pop right on out. So you can always reuse these sockets, and it doesn't 
hurt the ballast because then you're not making the wires any shorter or extra connections or anything. So back to the ballast here. I put the older one in this fixture and got it wired up. I capped off the end of the um, auxiliary wire because not really sure what that does. Wired it up according to the diagram. So we'll put the bulb in. There we go. Um, uh, this is the dimmer that I'm going to use. I use these um, for um, big strands of lights. Uh, they're high wattage dimmers. This one can take up to 1100 watts. So um, I make these little boxes and uh, they work quite well. So I'm going to plug it all in and I'll come right back. Now one thing you should do, like it says on the diagram here, is to ground it. That's what that little symbol is there. Um, obviously this fixture is not grounded, it's just a two-prong, um, you know, so it doesn't have the grounding uh, prong on it there. So um, yeah, it's just a two-prong uh, cord. I don't really care, we'll see if it works that way, uh, but you should ground these things. Um, let's see, this is off. Let me turn on the power strip. Let me make sure it's on. Yeah, okay, the power strip's on. Turn off our main light. I'm going to turn on that switch. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's trying to preheat the ends of the bulb. But it's not going so well. Okay. So, I don't know what that means, but I am curious. So what we're going to do now is bypass this dimmer. I'm trying to do this all in one hand here. So I'm holding the camera in the other. Let's plug it directly in. Okay, same thing. Um... Well, that's too bad. Uh, I'll figure out what's going on. So, last time I checked in here, it's been a little while, uh, we only had the ends lighting up. So, you know, we were warming up the, um, the ends, but we weren't obviously getting any arc in the tube. So, I decided, well, maybe this ballast is bad. So I put the other one in here, and it did the same thing. So then I decided to consult the lighting gallery forms, and figured out how to correctly wire this thing because this diagram isn't as helpful as I thought. So the black wire that goes to the ballast is for heating the ends of the tube and that's all we had hooked up. Now because it said that the uh, blue and yellow one was auxiliary and it didn't really say what that was unless I didn't read very well, um, I just capped it off. But apparently the blue and yellow one is what powers the ballast for the arc in the tube. So we have two separate circuits within the ballast itself. We have one for heating of the ends and the other for the arc in the tube. So I was uh, reading and they said, you know, we just use a standard incandescent dimmer. So I went and found one. Here's one. Um, it's one of the standard ones. You just click on and off and rotate it. I don't remember where the bright setting is and where the dim setting is, but I do know that you have to have this at full um, brightness um, to have the light actually turn on. So, um, it should also be grounded, but I didn't do that either. We don't need the dimmer in the circuit anymore because we need full power for the ends. So let's turn it on, and we do have warming, and um, and there we go. So, the um, this when this is off, only the ends, you know, are working. So, I don't want to burn it out there. You know, because we need those heated to work. So, it's, it's on and it works. Um, very cool. I didn't think that that's how this would wire up because the diagram... Uh, it just shows that it says to auxiliary control wire and then to control switch. Well, I thought that that would be, you know, your dimmer control switch because I'm controlling it with that to auxiliary control wire. So you need two wires coming to this thing if you're going to wire it up 
um, on a wall or something. They'll need a, uh, I don't know, it probably uses a very special dimmer that has extra wires going up to the fixture. But like I uh, said, I'm just going to put this in the fixture, maybe knock out this knockout here, or if there's a another one. I think that's the only one, yeah. That's the only one that seems reasonable. And uh, this would fit in there. And um, so yeah, if you turn it off again, you just have the ends. And you can dim it. That is absolutely awesome. So that's a dimmed fluorescent tube. That is so cool. You know, um, on a side note about these dimmable fluorescents, Walmarts used to have dimmable fluorescents. They've all been converted to LED now, um, but they would have electronic ballasts that would dim the lights when, you know, there's enough sun coming in through the sunlights to help conserve energy. So, um, this is the same idea, but just a very old version of it. Yeah, you can get it pretty dim. And you can kind of hear it hum a bit. Do you hear its different noises? Interesting. So, um, yeah, that's really neat. Cool. So if we turn it off, um, obviously this switch is before this one, so it turned off this circuit as well. If you turn it back on, I, I have to bump this a bit. Okay, now it, now it stays on. I think part of the problem is, you know, you, you need to have a cover on this fixture close to the bulb there for rapid start. Um, but again, I have that off because this isn't permanently wired up yet. But that's very cool. I'm going to leave it like this and install this dimmer in uh, this hole if it'll fit in there or make another one. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll do that and we'll see what the finished product is. Here is the final product. I drilled the hole for the main rotary there, the rotary dial, and two holes for where the switch plate would normally be because that's already threaded on the device itself, so no need for, um, you know, bolting it on there when I can use something that's already existing. So this works well. Obviously it still turns on and off, so we'll not have to do that, you know, just use the rotary function for dimming. But it fits in there perfectly, as you can tell and I have everything wired up and ready to go. So I'll put the cover back on and be right back. And it's all put back together now. I have the cover back on which helps a lot with starting the bulb. Of course we have our dimmer here on the side for dimming the fixture. And um, yeah, it's a complete unit again. So, um, this electrical tape here I added because um, me using this fixture for many things, I didn't want the metal here to rub on it too much, so that's just for extra protection. There's no cuts there or anything, I just, whatever. So, um, turn off our main light here, let's turn it on. So, remember before, I had to like mess with the dimmer a bit to get it to start. With the cover on, that helps amazingly, because you need that for rapid start fixtures. And it's at um, full brightness right now. So, let me see here. Okay, so there we can see the whole fixture. We can dim it down, you know, fairly dim here. Oh, there it cut out. So, I mean, right now it just looks like uh, a two lamp rapid start fixture with one of the bulbs missing. Uh, you know, um, or one burned out and the other one just does, you know, lights very dimly. So, very cool project. Um, this worked really well. I'm real happy with it. I'm glad that I uh, remembered that I had these ballasts and could put them to use. Awesome. So I really hope you enjoyed that. That was a pretty cool fixture to put together. I've always seen dimmable fluorescents, but never really had one in person. And since I've had these ballasts, I should really use them. So. It was a nice project to put together. 
Um, I really do hope you enjoyed this little vlog video here. And also please comment, rate, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.